The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning, everyone. My name is Alicia, and I'm going to be giving the webinar today. Today, we're going to see how to do our searches. And after we do some searches, I'm going to go to the overview of the properties and show you what you can find in the overview of the properties and what you can do from there. Remember that if you have any questions during the webinar, just go ahead and type them in, in the chat section and I'll be happy to answer them as soon as I see them. Okay, so once we log in, this is what we find now. This is our control panel where I can go to my main product, my sub product, or any other area in the system that I need to go to. I can go to the documents I sent. I can change the information on my account. I can change my defaults. I can go to my billing information, that is my credit card information, and my invoices if I need to print invoices for tax purposes or whatever. I go here to billing information and I have access to my billing and my invoices. I, I can download them and print them. If you have any problems with your system, something doesn't work, of course you can contact us through the live chat, call us on the phone, or you can create a ticket directly in your system and that will come up to us in customer service and technical support and we'll try to solve the problem as soon as we can. This is the help section. This section will have, it's not done yet, but it will have all the videos on how to do any particular things in the system. There are short videos that show you a certain aspect of the system, let's say how to upload a contract, how to delete a contract, how to do a search. So that would be here in the help section. The affiliate system and advertise. You can go there and see the information on how the affiliate system and for ReFX works and how you can advertise in our page. Okay, so we're going to do searches, so I'm going to go into my main product. And here I have the page where I do my searches. Depending on the resolution of your screen, the size of your screen, it will be displayed this way. If you see that you open your account and it doesn't show you the map, you'll see that you have additional icons up here because that could mean that your screen is a little bit smaller, but don't worry. You do have the option to see the map also with an additional icon you'll see up here. So don't worry about it. Yes look for the icon to show you the map on the top icons of the system. Okay, so here we are in my search. What I can search in ReFX? Remember the data in ReFX is actually every single property that is registered in public records, whether it's for sale or not for sale. If it's registered in public records, you'll find it in ReFX. For any property, at least you'll have the contact of the physical address of the owner. So you won't always have a phone number, you won't always have an email, but you will always have the physical address of the owner, whether he lives in the property or not. If for properties that are listed for sale, those you will have the contact and the full contact information of the agent or realtor that is handling the property. 
There you'll have phone numbers, emails, so you can contact them directly through the system. Uh, for probates, we do have probates in the system. Those will, you'll have the contact information for the attorney and the representative. Okay, for now, we are in the state of Florida and we have recently opened New Jersey and California. So if you have all count, if your account is professional, all counties, you'll have access to any other state that we add and all counties in those states. We will be adding as we go along through the end of this year and next year, we'll be adding more states as we go along. The aim is to go nationwide. So at some point you'll have all, if you have all counties with no additional cost, you'll have access to the information for all states in the, and all counties. You can set these as, as there is so many information you can there is an option to set as default the ones that you work more with, that is state and a county that you work more with, that you would do here in the defaults. Okay, I have mine set at, the defaults I have set is Florida and Broward. City. If I want to look for a specific city, I can type that in. I can look for a specific zip code and type that in here. Like I said, if you leave it at public record, it will pull out everything and anything. But you can leave it at public records and use the rest of the filters to narrow down your search. For example, I can leave it at public records and then come down here and select pre-foreclosed. Sorry for that. <coughs> Sorry again. Okay. So I, if I leave this one at public records, it does not necessarily mean that I have to have all the properties in the public records in the state of in the state of Florida or any state that I'm looking at. Because I can leave it at public records and narrow it down in other ways. Like I said, I'll leave this at public records and put select pre-foreclosed. I'll select single family. I can look for single family, condos, towns, and villas, multifamily, plus 10 or minus 10, commercial, vacant land, and mobile homes. I'm going to select single family in this case. Like I was commenting before, we do have probates in the system. I'm not going to select probates right now, but you can select probates yes or no. If you select probates yes, this is how the search works. This boxes here, they are actually tabs, and each tab will have its own set of windows according to what the tab is about. So in public records, you have number of beds and bathrooms, gross area, living area, lot size, legal description, sold price, sold date, for sale, yes or no. That's another way I can narrow down my search. For example, I have up here properties in public records, but I want them to be pre-foreclosed and I want them to be for sale. Yes. And let's see, I want them to ha be owner occupied. That is, the owner does live in the property. So I'll click here, yes, and owner occupied. I can search by debt to equity, that is, how much debt has the property has on it. But since I selected pre foreclosed, we have to assume that all the properties in my results will have a very a very considerable depth on them so i'll leave the depth to equity in blank we can search for tax delinquent properties in most of the 
counties. If the county you select up here has tax delinquency information, you'll see immediately, you'll see this windows here. If by any chance you scroll down and you do not have this windows here for tax delinquency, that means that the county you selected does not have that information for the public, so we don't, we can't have it in our system. So if you select a county and you do not see the tax delinquency information, it's because that county does not have that information made public and we cannot have it in our system. Okay, I can select a certain market value. Let's put here between, and I'm going to select 100,000, 1, 2, 3, to 400. As you can see, every time I select anything on this side, it automatically comes up in the middle, in this middle column. So I, it, so with one glance, I can see what I have in my selection. I don't have to go look to see what I have selected. I have it all right here. Then I can go to the For Sale tab. There I can select, let's say, days on the market. I want properties that have been in the market for more than 30 days. Oh, let's put 90. So I select it in my drop down greater than and select and type in 90 here. I can put listing date, entry date, HOA fee. I can look directly for, in financial, I can look for foreclosure, REO, short sales or none. Active value, active equity, potential equity. If you want any information on, on this, on any of these, terms, we do have a little PDF that we can send you by email that have all the concepts, all the basic concepts that we use here in REFIC. So just give us a call or send us an email asking for the basic concepts and we'll be happy to send it to you by email. I'll have the tab for for rent. I'm not using that anything for rent right now. So it's just so you see that we have that tab here if you're actually looking for rent properties for sale by owner. We selected here in public records for sale, yes. So I wouldn't be able to use for sale by owner right now. For sale by owners are properties that are listed in various sources, but they're not listed in the MLS. Okay, let's. So we have a question here, what is active media? Okay, active value is calculated based on the properties that are active for sale at this moment. So active media would be the medium active, the medium price of the properties active for sale at this moment. So active value is the property similar to the one that you're looking at that have the with the system has three variables as a default so it will be properties 
listed for sale at this moment within a 0.5 square miles with more or less 10% of the square footage is the one that you're looking for and that are active for sale and based on that and those it will calculate the active value and the active media would be the medium listing price of those properties let's go back okay so I was telling you for sale by owner you can search for properties for sale by owners like I said those are properties that are listed in various sources but are not listed in the MLS the owner is the one that is selling his property without actually listing it in MLS it could have an agent um, it's not always that you will have an email address you will always like I said have a physical owner address for all the properties foreclosure information okay so I selected pre foreclosed I could come here and select auction date or the, this next three tabs actually work very similar you can look for very specifics because for example in foreclosure you can look for a specific case or a specific holder or a specific plaintiff or mortgager or attorney but in general what you would use would be file date or auction date or auction amount those were the ones that you those filters would be the ones that you would use for general searches I'm not going to be too specific so that I'll come up with several properties because if we become too specific sometimes one thing crosses off another and we end up with nothing so I selected pre foreclosed properties that are within uh, price range of 100,000 and 400,000 that are for sale that the owner lives in it let's go to show you the mortgage tab again you can be very look for a very specific if you have the information for buyer buyer grantor document details but in general you would use amount or record the date same thing in probates you can look for a very specific with the ID notice with the name of the representative of his or any of his contact information or the name or any of, of the contact information of the attorney but in general for probate for probate you would use file date or publish date we do have probates that either for file date those that were, that were actually filed in public records and we also look for probates and published so you'll see that sometimes there is different the information that you get for those probates because they come from various sources and not all sources have all the actual information for the probates but again you'll have the properties information and the owners information okay so let's do the search if I want to delete any of the searches any of the parameters if I want to change it let's say market value no I don't want 100 to 400 I can click here and delete that one and I can go back and change that let's put for sale death and market value let's put greater equal or greater than 
200. Okay, once I have all my parameters and I have exactly what I want, what I can do if I want to do the search, if this is a search I usually do, this is the type of properties I like working with, I can actually save this particular search. So when I come in next week or next month and want to do the same type of search, remember the data changes day by day, so your results will be different even if your parameters are the same. If you do the same search next week, your results will be different because the data in the system has changed. So I can save these parameters. How do I do that? I come here after I have everything exactly as I want it. I come here in Manage Search. Click there. And that will open this window where I can save that search. That is the parameters of that particular search. Also, ReFX offers a set of pre-saved searches. As soon as it opens, I'll show you they are what they are. There are around 60, 65 saved searches, and you can look through them and see if the parameters are in any of those searches is something that you're interested in and that you can work with. These are not them. Okay, the any of your accounts will have these searches. They start with RFX, that's ReFX. And for example, bank owned condos, bank owned multifamily, pre foreclosed out of state owner probates out-of-state multifamily, candles for sale REO. So if you want to select any of these, if you look through any of these and you say, well, I want to look for my multifamily for sale REOs, I select it and click on load. That will load that set of parameters. But let me show you first how to save the ones that I get in the search that we're doing right now. So I click on new. I give it a name. And I give it a description. The description would be something that tells what type of search it is. For example, this is single family. Pre foreclosed and it was plus four hundred did we say? I think it was four hundred. Um what else did we have there? Ah, uh, owner occupied. Okay, once I have the name and the description, I click on save. The search was saved. So if I close here and I clear my search, now if I want to do that search that I just saved, I come here to manage search, look for my search. They save in alphabetical order, so that was webinar test, single family, pre for close, plus 400, owner occupied. I select it, click on load, and here I have the parameters. Ah, it wasn't 400, it was 200. Well, over there, I can't, there's one thing, I can't, I can override whatever I have here, but I cannot change the name. So I would have to do a new one and actually put 
400, uh, 200 instead of 200, 400, sorry. Okay, so this is the search I want to make. Let's do the search. Any questions up to here? Okay, so let's click on search and see what we come up with. Okay, this is my result. I had a total of 77 properties. I can see my properties as a list. I can see them in a map. Or I can see them in detail view. These are the three ways I can see the, my results. So I can see them in a map, I can see them with a little picture with the basic information on the side, and I can see them as a grid view. What I see here in my results, uh, if you see uh, in the second column, I see a uh, In the second column, we have there a, this is the follow status. This green circle means that I have a, these properties are actually in my follow-up already, so I don't have to work with them right now because I already have them in my follow-up. If there is nothing in this column, it means that you do not have them in your follow-up and you can go ahead and work with them. Okay, so this is what I see in my results. Let's go to the overview and see what we see in the overview of the properties. To go to the overview of the property, all I have to do is click on it, and that will take me to the overview of the property. In the overview of the property, I'll see, first of all, details information. This is all the public records information I have. Then I have legal description, sales history, and owner's information. If you have professional dialer, you'll have additional phone numbers. These are owner relatives phones. Any number that is registered in public records for this property will appear here. That is if you have professional dialer. The next thing we have in our overview is additional links. That is if the property is for sale you'll have additional links. If the property is not for sale, you won't have this tab. What this tab does is allow me to go directly to the IDX and Realtor.com. These are web pages for properties listed for sale. And there you can see additional information on this particular property. Usually they have more pictures of the property and other additional information on the property. See here we have this property actually has 37 pictures available and you can go sort through go through them and see them all and additional information on the property. Let's go back to Realtor. Same thing with Realtor.com. Realtor.com. Well, doesn't want to show up right now. Okay, comparables. What do I have in comparables? 
comparables, like I told you, ReFX works with three default parameters to search for comparables. That is, in compa regular comparables, it will have properties that were sold in the last 12 months that are 10% more or less the same square footage that the one that you're looking at, and they're within a 0.5 square mile radius of the subject property. Based on all these properties, the system will calculate market value. So you select them all and calculate market value. You can change what comparables you use. There's two ways to do it. Just look through here. For example, I can sort this ascending. My the my subject property is listed for 982 and here I have properties that are actually way below that price. So I'm going to take off this one that's 257 and this one that's 625 and let's see what we have down here well this one is 1 million the other ones are pretty much within range so I'm going to leave all of them in and I can recalculate my market value Another way I can change this is in my filter. I can filter my comps and change the default parameters. I can, for example, change the distance. Remember that by default is 0.5 square miles. Or I can change the closing date. Remember that I told you that by default is properties that were sold in the last 12 months, you can change it and put properties sold in the last six months, for example. Click on filter and that will change what I see here in my comparables. Now I can select them and recalculate my market value. Actually, it came up pretty much the same. Okay, so that are comparables. Properties sold in the last 12 months within a 0.5 square mile. That calculate with those comparables, the system calculates market value. And the next tab we have is active comps. That is, by default, the system will take properties that are active for sale at this moment that are 10% more or less the same square footage that are active for, within a 0.5 square mile that are active for sale. I think I repeated myself, but sorry. Let's go ahead. Okay, so based on these ones, the system will calculate active value. I select them and calculate my active value. Again, I can change it, deselecting, and recalculating or I can go into the filter and actually change something for example let's see my subject property has five bedrooms and five bathrooms and actually none of these have the same but let's take off this one that's way off well not way off it has five bedrooms and only three bathrooms. The other ones have four. Let's take that one off and recalculate. So it didn't change too much, but again, I can go into my filter and do that through here. So my subject property has five bedrooms and five bathrooms. Actually, if I put here five and five, it will come up with none but let's put it so you can see if I put five bed since my subject property has five five I'm going to use comparables with five five and click on filter you'll see that 
I'll come up with none because the ones I have here, none of them have five. But let's do it so you can see. Oh. Well, where did that one come from? Well, actually I do have one then. And I can recalculate. Then I have distress counts. Distress counts that is just a comparable, just for you to see, to have, you can take it into account, but it doesn't calculate anything. So uh, these are properties in the area within a 0.5 square mile that are underwater upside down they have very large depths in them for example you have this one it has a market value of 654 and it has a known depth of 609 this first one doesn't ha actually have a known depth but it already has an auction date This one has a market value of 635 and it has a known debt of 576. So that is what I have in my distrust count. So if I want to see additional information on any of the properties, I just click on it and that will take me to the overview of that property without closing the overview that I'm looking at right now. This is the overview of the comp where I have all the tasks with all the information on that property and then I can come back to the one I'm looking at. I have rental comps again this is just to see what type of investment you can do in the area if you can if it as an investor if it suits you to buy the property and actually just put it up for regular rent this show you how, this shows you how what is the current renting price for properties in the area similar to the one that you're looking at these are regular rentals and we have also b and b comps these are bed and breakfast that is properties that are being rented for days and it will show you how much they're going out for in those in that area we have in this case we have three comparables for that the daily average rate is you can see the daily average rate of the cost for staying in the property for one night and the average a uh, occupancy rate that is for example this one is a daily average cost of 125 and in the year it has an occupancy rate of 82 percent so most of the year round you're getting 125 so if you get out your calculator and you can actually know how much your how much you get how much revenue you get on this property by renting it renting it by days and not with a regular rent as you see the regular rents you have the listing price here and here actually you would have to get the calculator and see what how much you would get for this property putting it out as a bed and breakfast tax debt well this property actually has a tax delinquency information and here you can see the information here in the overview you'll have more or less tabs depending on what information is available for the property if the property didn't have a tax debt you won't you wouldn't have this tab here 
this is not a probate so I don't have a probate tab here if this is a foreclosure so I have a foreclosure information if in the area there is no bed and breakfast comparables you won't see the bed and breakfast comparables all the other tabs except for additional links that you only see for properties listed are available in all properties so in all properties you'll have details comparables active comps distress comps and rental comps all the other ones are depending on what information is available for the property at this moment from here from the overview of the property what you can generate several types of reports they, there are other webinars on what type of reports they are and what each one works shows you. I'm just going to go through them and show you which ones they are. From here, from the overview, I can generate a property analysis report. What that report will do is put in all the information on this task in a nice and neat report that I can print out or save to share the information on this property with someone. The BPO report will put in, will lay out the information for the comparables and the active comparables, uh, contrasting it to my subject property so I can print it out or save it and share that information or save it for myself. Subdivision report that will show me let's do it subdivision report will show me the actual movement and the different subdivisions in the area to see which one is more profitable which one is more rental which one have better movement sales movement in that area. X-ray report is a report of the actual market in the area. It will show me a total prop total properties in the area, total properties for sale, days and average days on the market, average sold price in the last six months and the last last twelve months. See, this is a total pre foreclosed properties in the area compared to the rest of the county. Total pre foreclosed not for sale in this area compared to the rest of the county. Properties upside down, not upside down, not in foreclosure. Average sold price, medium sold price. So this is a report that you can save or print either to share the information and or save it for yourself. Like I said, this is the X-ray report that will show me how the market is acting in the area showing me the total properties in the area total distressed properties pre foreclosed foreclosed upside down not in foreclosure active for sale owner occupied and not owner occupied comparing the area the subject area to the county or the subject or uh, like I see pre foreclosed active for sale, pre foreclosed not for sale, pre foreclosed with less than zero equity, pre foreclosed with more than zero equity, pre foreclosed with more than 30% equity in this area compared to the rest of the county. Active for sale, properties for sale with 30% equity, pre foreclosed for sale with 30% equity or more, foreclosed for sale. 30% equity or more. Again, it compares the subject area with the rest of the county. Properties sold in the last 12 months, average sold in the last six months, 
total active for sale, months of inventory, and average days on the market. Again, comparing this area to the rest of the county. Okay, I have a question here. These reports are only for one property or all the properties that meet the criteria you have selected. Okay, for example, this X-ray report is actually for all the area where your property, the subject property that you're looking at is. If this one doesn't take it, into consideration the criteria. This one only takes into consideration the radius. If I go back, let's go back and redo it. If the X-ray report, I can select the area. So the only criteria the X-ray report takes is the radius around the property that you're looking at. If you apply, it will show you a to total properties in the area, total properties active for sale, foreclosure, average days of inventory for all for that area, in the, uh, independent of the actual parameters of the actual property that you're looking at. It only takes into consideration that the property is within that 0.5 square miles that it, this X-ray report is analyzing. The property analysis report that's different because that one is about this particular property and it will take into consideration only the information that is in the different tabs for this property. The subdivision also is general. It will take show you the information on the different subdivisions in the area. The BPO report is particular for this property that I'm generating right now it, and it will show me the comparables for this property and the active comparables for this property. So that's how it works. Some of them are particular for this properties and some of them like the subdivision and the x-ray report are general for the area. So that's what we have in the overview. From here, from the overview, I could actually send a contract to this particular property. If you have platinum, that's our most basic. That's what you have. From here is where you usually send a contract. If you have professional or professional dialer, the best way is to send it to your follow-up and send your contract from your actual follow-up. However, if you do decide to send your contract from here. The system will ask you anyways to send it to your follow-up, send it to your follow-up, and then continue the process to actually send in the contract. You can print this out or save it. So that's what we have in the overview. We saw what, how to do our searches, how to manage our searches. I can save searches and retrieve my previous saved searches once I have my results. I can see which properties I already have in my follow-up. I can go to the overview of any property just clicking on it. And in the overview, I see all the information available for that property and I can generate several reports on my properties. That's basically what I wanted to show you today. Remember that if you have any questions, we have the let's, this is the live chat we have here that we attend to it during office hours from 9 in the morning to 6 in the afternoon. And But if you're working after hours and you have a quick question, just type it in there and we'll see it first thing the next morning and we'll try to answer it as soon as we see it. Again, in the 
control panel, you can create a ticket if you find an actual problem with your system and we'll try to solve it again as soon as we come in. Or even during office hours, you can create tickets and we'll see it and contact you if you need, we need any additional information to solve your problem. And you can have, you can also call us uh, to our phone, that's 888-349-5368, and we'll be happy to attend any questions you might have. If we don't have any more questions, I want to wish you a very, actually I have to wish you a very Merry Christmas. We won't see you until after Christmas, so I hope you have a very, very nice Christmas with all your family and friends, and hope to see you next week here. So, happy weekend, happy Christmas, and best wishes to all of you. Bye.